Um, so welcome to Docker Austin. Um, there's a couple of folks or a couple of companies I'd like to thank first. Uh, first off, Rackspace uh, for hosting us at this awesome venue. Uh, they do a lot of stuff for the Austin community uh, in terms of uh, hosting uh, hosting meetups, hosting kind of talks and special kind of talks and stuff like that. So uh, big shout out to them. Um, also a uh, big shout out to Oracle who's uh, sponsoring pizza tonight. And then uh, we have uh, John and uh, John and Bob also coming to talk about uh, Docker and uh, databases and stuff with, with respect to Oracle. Um, awesome, so without further ado, uh, I'd like to intro uh, two folks that I've worked with for, it feels like a long time now. It's like been like three, three, four years. Um, Bob used to be uh, my master and commander uh, when we were back in the Stack Engine uh, days. Um, he is a great fisherman. Um, he's caught a lot of different things, and um, including uh, including containers, uh, as I hear. Uh, and 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 then he was uh, he was caught by Oracle. Uh, and he runs uh, the uh, the developer uh, evangelism uh, branch of Oracle Cloud. Um, also would like to introduce John, who um, everybody thinks he's from Australia, but is, he's actually from, from England. He was originally from England, but as of like a couple of days ago, he, he just got his US passport. So he's, uh, he's, he's official Texan. Woo! Um, John runs our, um, in, in Oracle Cloud, so Oracle is a big company. Uh, all of us kind of work inside of Oracle Cloud, uh, and John runs all the product marketing uh, and product management for uh, containers and like all the newer stuff that uh, we have going on. So without further ado, uh, John and Bob. All right. Thanks, Karthik. Uh, good to be here. Uh, I think we were here many times over the uh, last uh, few years uh, back in the Stack Engine days. So, you know, Stack Engine, Austin-based company, uh, probably about three years ago, we were uh, uh, formed and uh, acquired about a year and a half ago by Oracle. So uh, it was kind of a, an early acquisition. We were about probably 14, 15 people at the time. And uh, yeah, so we're focused on container development and container management inside the Oracle Cloud. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, do some demos in a little bit around um, some of the Stack Engine sort of products that came through Oracle Cloud that are available today called Oracle Container Cloud Service. Um, a lot of new stuff we're working on in terms of CI, CD, uh, Kubernetes deployment, et cetera. Uh, it's kind of an exciting time to be at uh, um, inside Oracle. Um, you may not believe it, but it's actually a, there's a huge effort in terms of push around Oracle Cloud. Uh, we have a new bare metal cloud we rolled out probably about nine months ago. Um, uh, built by a team up in Seattle, a lot of X AWS guys, uh, Azure guys. Uh, so it's a pure bare metal cloud running now VMs and a whole bunch of new services, high performance, uh, sort of built from scratch. Uh, so they took a, they hired a whole bunch of developers out of uh, AWS and said, you know, build a new cloud. If you could do it from scratch, how would you do it new? And they kind of built it from the bottom up and it's a really cool um, technology base uh, designed for running high performance, high security, uh, but you could run, you know, little workloads, container systems, et cetera, uh, on, on top of it, too. So uh, we're part of that group. Uh, we're the Austin kind of contingent, uh, but there's a group in, um, like I said, Seattle, Portland, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of the other kind of uh, technologies we have that are part of that. So uh, John and I did a, a presentation at DockerCon a couple months ago when they were here. Uh, so we kind of reprised a little bit of that. Um, kind of the idea was three developers walk into a bar, and it kind of talks about three of the different types of uh, kind of developers and personas, uh, people we work with uh, across kind of the community, developer community at, at, at Oracle and uh, uh, with Oracle Cloud. So uh, that's us, Bob and John, and uh, we'll sort of go from there. Uh, you can tell we're a big company. We got the safe harbor thing. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but don't, don't quote me on anything I say. <laughs> so... Um, Kind of the idea behind um, this whole uh, presentation was really talking about um, some technologies and um, how they fit into some different use cases, particularly around containers and Docker, um, 
and uh, some of the problems and um, issues people are facing. Uh, so we kind of split up uh, some of the uh, information into sort of three different areas. As you can imagine, we work a lot with um, Java developers, Oracle developers, um, and enterprise developers. That's kind of a big part of the current Oracle uh, development community. Um, and um, one of the big announcements uh, we'll walk through uh, was you know, bringing all the Oracle commercial products into Docker Store. Uh, we'll do some demos around that. But that was a big announcement. We had a DockerCon. We had our, uh, our senior VP up on stage with Ben Golub doing a big announcement around that. And it was kind of a big thing, getting some of the Oracle components into the Docker world, almost a mixing of uh, two different worlds. But you can kind of see where Docker's move forward in the enterprise and where uh, containers have basically been mainstream within all the Oracle uh, community. You know, it's really interesting inside Oracle, too. Um, you know, we work with a lot of external customers, but we also work with a lot of internal teams who are using Docker, using Kubernetes uh, to develop their own products. Um, and that was one thing we found as we got acquired um, at Stack Engine, that we had a lot of people coming to us uh, looking for best practices, how to actually use containers. Uh, so Docker's got a huge development um, set of resources internally uh, that are now using containers and Docker, et cetera, and using some of our technologies too. Um, a lot of the work we've done in previous companies and at, at Stack Engine was actually going after the, the DevOps community and working with the DevOps teams that are out there. Uh, Stack, Engine, Stack Engine was very operationally focused, you know, a lot around deployment and how do you get up and running very quickly. Um, a lot of the work we're doing next, and we can talk a little bit about that in a few slides, is around how we take this container model and move it into the Kubernetes world. We're getting a lot of demand around Kubernetes and operationalization of, of container systems. And then uh, cloud native developers, you know, we're doing a bunch of open source work too. Uh, we were at CoreOS Fest uh, probably about a week, uh, about a month and a half ago or so, and talked a lot about um, our commitment and how we're uh, contributing into the Docker community and the Kubernetes community in particular. John will go through a couple of recent open source initiatives that we put out into the community around uh, Docker and how to maybe operationalize Docker and, and extend it in a um, kind of production sense. So that's kind of an intro uh, to get things started. Um, so really the big announcement and kind of where we started uh, with DockerCon was uh, moving all our commercial software components into the Docker store. We announced that. It's up and running now, so you should go hit the Docker store and take a look at it. Um, you know, there's a free license available through the Oracle Technology Network OTN, so you can actually use these for free um, within that license use. And uh, it's really easy to get to. Uh, it's something that, you know, shows a, a broad commitment to getting our containers and our commercial products into containers, the images that are supported, and allowing uh, developers to use those very easily. Um, so, you know, getting through the Oracle Docker store, uh, we'll do some demos on this a little bit, but there's lots of stuff available there. I'll walk over, you can see our database, MySQL, Linux, JDK, WebLogic, et cetera. So, um, pretty easy to pull down these components, they're supportable, um, they're, uh, there's a lot of uh, technology support around um, GitHub itself. Um, GitHub has a, a lot of the scripts that help you create the images. Uh, so, um, and here are the links, you know, where the Docker store is itself. Um, there's a source code for creating the images in uh, GitHub itself, and a bunch of best practices that are available online on how to run these, et cetera. So, database, MySQL, Java, Fusion Middleware, uh, a whole range of different components, and it's just a sort of beginning of a, a broad commitment to really help uh, and engage with the developer community who are using instances in the cloud and using our products too. So uh, we'll do a demo that kind of plays with this a little bit, talks about the Docker store and pulls that into uh, some of the components that we're using too. But this was the first major announcement we made at DockerCon. It was kind of a big part about our story. Um, there's already a bunch of open source things that are available. You know, Oracle um, has a, a big Linux uh, division too, so there's a bunch of Oracle Linux components that are already up on Docker Hub, and a variety of different kind of open source components that are there too. So it's something that we've been doing a while. Um, so uh, you know, play with this, go take a look at it. There's a bunch of free licenses available on Oracle Cloud too, and we'll give you some links to that in a little bit. Uh, the second major announcement we made at DockerCon was uh, an acquisition we made of a CI/CD. A solution, very container, Docker-centric solution. It's called Worker. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Worker. They're a startup. They're based in Europe. Um, uh, the, so if you're from Europe, they would call this Worker. 
but uh, we, we just call it Worker and then typically misspell it. Um, and, uh, but we announced at DockerCon this acquisition. Um, if you go to worker.com, uh, there's you know, free downloads. It's a really easy CI, CD system. It's all container-based, so everything deals with containers. Um, uh, so you can pull containers in, hook up to um, you know, image repositories, uh, go to a registry, deploy directly to Kubernetes. Uh, it's for individuals, but also can be used for uh, large organizations, groups, et cetera. Uh, Web-based, SaaS product, kind of new age, uh, very container-centric, and uh, really aligns nicely with what we're doing um, with the Stack Engine technology and other um, sort of initiatives we have. So it's going to be one of the centerpieces for our uh, container management products. Uh, has a nice CLI, but a nice GUI too. Integrates with Slack, chatbot kind of integration, um, and also then can deploy out to Kubernetes, to our um, Oracle Container Cloud Service, or other products too. So, uh, you know, take a look at that when you have a chance. Uh, very popular product throughout the community. They had probably thousands of different users, a bunch of free users, a lot of uh, developers who are using this worldwide. Uh, so we're really excited about having Worker in kind of the broader uh, Oracle Container Cloud uh, community. So. So Worker kind of fits into the overall strategy here um, as kind of that CI, CD, you know, continuous integration, continuous delivery tool that helps to kind of automate the uh, software lifecycle in that process. Uh, the Container Cloud product, which is where Stack Engine kind of got plugged into, is really where uh, the orchestration and deployment and management of the container systems work, and we'll sort of do a demonstration of this in a little bit. Uh, we've had some other acquisitions throughout the cloud environment. Apiary is an API management uh, product and there's a whole range of APM application performance monitoring, performance monitoring, uh, other types of analytic tools that are available to manage it. So the whole stack that's developing around containers and container management is something that uh, fits nicely into where uh, we see uh, the developer community going, uh, the cloud native uh, market going, and we can actually then automate, deploy, manage, and operate um, throughout uh, kind of the whole life cycle of a container application. So, so um, you know, with no no real further ado, I could uh, now hand off to John. We're going to do a quick demo of um, the store communication, the store integration, and then um, into the Oracle Container Cloud. If you guys recognize some of the Stack Engine kind of GUI, uh, we've reskinned it, but it does have some of the same kind of original look and feel. So. Um, but it's been extended primarily to really help with the integration and use within an Oracle environment. So you need a uh, mic stand? Okay. Introducing John Reeve. Thanks, Bob. I'll try, try and uh, face the, the camera over here. Um, so yes, yeah, so as Bob mentioned, I'm gonna take you through kind of example of, take a look at the, some of the images on the Docker store. We'll you know, hook up one of those images, the database image, into the uh, container cloud service here, and then deploy it. And then uh, also check out GitHub and see some of the stuff we have going on there. Um, so basically, you know, with container cloud service, operationally, we're, we're really on the deployment end, of what the Bob showed there in that, in that previous slide. So you know, we, we kind of hook up to your existing registries, your existing CID, CD systems like Worker, um, take those images, and then we can deploy those as what we call stacks. So you know, fully blown applications inside of the container cloud service. And then obviously operate those, monitor those on an ongoing basis, orchestrate those. Um, and again, as Bob said, a big focus for us at Stack Engine and in the container cloud was really the operational aspects. So, Yep, how do I get this kind of deployed and tested, but also how do I operate this and maintain this on an ongoing basis? So let's take a look um, at the uh, Oracle store real quick. So we've got the, got the store up here, and just a real quick search. If we search for Oracle here, we can see all the, um, the Oracle images here that we mentioned earlier on. Um, and you know the database is here, the web logic server coherence, many of the images we saw earlier. Um, we can also take a look at GitHub. So typically the way we do this at Oracle is a lot of the, um, the newest images will be posted first to GitHub. So for example, there's a 
database, I believe it's 12.2.0.1 or something, uh, out on GitHub, and then that's in process of being certified on the Docker store. So we'll put the latest and greatest out on GitHub. You can see here, here's the Docker database, um, Docker files with instructions on how to build those images, and here's the 12.2.0.1 release of the database. So if you always want the latest and greatest, you can get those from GitHub, but if you just want to pull down the images, you can do that from the Docker store as well. So once we've got an image, you know, uh, uh, for those of you familiar with the Docker store, um, you log in basically with your, with your Docker details, um, you go to the setup instructions, and basically here there's a click through where you'll have to accept a, a license agreement, I've already done it in my case, but it's just the standard Oracle technology network license agreement that Bob talked about earlier, basically when you sign up here, and that's, you, you know, you're accepting those, the, the terms of that license, uh, development test and so forth, but a free way to kind of pull down the image and, and start playing with the database and deploying it. So, okay, so I got the, the store, I've got the image on the store that I want to deploy. Let's go into uh, the container cloud service and take a look and, and look at how we can deploy images from the Docker store. So here's my kind of dashboard. This is a portal into my, my container service. I got a bunch of uh, uh, Docker hosts essentially deployed. So this is a, for those of you familiar, a container service is basically a hosted uh, Docker management service where you know you quick come in, you spin up your doc, we spin up the Docker host for you, spin up the Docker management for you, and you just need, basically need to bring your containers and go. Um, so it, lo it removes a lot of the headache around having to stand up and maintain your own uh, Docker environment, we're essentially doing that for you. Um, so a couple of concepts in here, we have the concepts of what we call services and stacks. So a service is essentially a template for how to go run a container. So it's a set of instructions that references the Docker image you want to run, any kind of Docker runtime information. So you know any ports you want to expose or any network, vo uh, any uh, storage volumes you want to leverage, that kind of stuff. So we can see we've got um, one defined for the Oracle database and if we go to registries, you can hook up obviously the registries where you want to go grab your images and run them. You can see we've got an entry for the Docker store here. So we basically, the Docker store, and, and maybe some of you know this already, but it looks a lot like uh, organizations in Docker Hub. So um, when you go and hook up the Docker store in, in the container cloud service, you basically just put the URL as the typical Docker Hub, index.docker.io forward slash store. And then you put in your, your username, your password, your credentials. And that basically gives you a login to the Docker store and allows you to pull down the images that you want to run. And then when you want to run an image, you define what we call a service. And a service, again, is just a template for how to go run that thing, uh, where to get the image from, all the container runtime information. And you can see here that we're basically pulling down, this is pulling down the, the latest version of the, the database from the store. And there's a bunch of, uh, kind of environment variables here that we're populating. Essentially, it's gonna get put in our Docker run command um, and we're gonna run that database. And then we have, we actually have a deployment here. We can start up that database. So this is gonna start basically the database container based off of that, that image we just saw. Um, now take a couple of seconds to come up. And we can drill into that, what we call deployment. So deployment is a example of a, a running database. Um, that's uh, coming up here, and I think the, the health check's just coming up. So the database has come up. Um, we can kind of drill into that container. Um, we can look at its logs to see, grab the logs from the database. And I think the database is actually at this point still doing some initialization, some initialization scripts that are happening. Um, so we can come back and look at that. And then, so that's a simple case of kind of starting a you know, a container, in this case we're just starting a database container based on that image in the Docker store. Um, of course you could, you know, you can do, do the typical Docker, Docker um, login, pull your image from the command line, you can do it that way too. If you just want to pull that image, run it locally, that's fine. In this case we're showing it kind of being run in the container service. And then we have a, a number of what we call stacks, um, which are more sophisticated examples of wiring together a number of different container types into a fully blown application. So things like a, you know, an ELK stack, a logging stack, a monitoring stack. Um, we actually have a WordPress, sorry, a WebLogic uh, 
stack that you can deploy, uh, WordPress and so forth, and many of these are also out on GitHub as well under the uh, Oracle uh, repository so we can find that. Let's go back and check out our Oracle uh, database container, see it running, drill into it, let's check out the logs, hopefully it should have a little message here. Um, so it takes a little while to initialize, but essentially, eventually you'll get a message in the log here that the, the uh, basically the database is ready to go and we've deployed that, that database. So that's a quick, quick skim through again of the Oracle store, kind of using the container cloud service and again, all, of this, all of these images go up on GitHub first, so if you want the latest and greatest, you can always go to GitHub and build your own Oracle images if you want to. Let's switch back to the presentation here. So, as Bob said, you know, we're very much focused on uh, the application developer and supporting them with a container, container native kind of life cycle. If we look at the Oracle Cloud, essentially we have a wide range of options for folks and developers to deploy their software um, uh, onto the cloud. Really starting all, all the way on the left with very, if you like, IaaS-centric, so Bob mentioned our bare metal cloud that we announced probably about, now, as he said, nine months ago. So you can literally spin up a bare metal machine, you can put an OS on that machine, spin that up very quickly, and get access to the raw uh, bare metal machine. You can also build virtual machines on top of that and deploy in virtual machines. And of course we have containers on top of that with things like the container cloud service. So we have these different levels of abstraction on the infrastructure that as a developer you can consume, all the way up to kind of really platform as a service uh, capabilities where we're doing a lot of the, if you like, a lot of the heavy lifting for you so you don't have to deal with the underlying infrastructure anymore. So things like you know, deploying Java as a service, the application container service um, where you can actually just bring your code and run it a little like, little Heroku-like in many ways, um, serverless uh, that uh, th things we're working on and you know, ways to kind of all the way to the right with kind of visual, um, visual uh, uh, programming and development where I'm not even, I may be just using an, uh, an interface to develop and deploy my code. Uh, things like mobile, um, the app, what we call the app builder cloud service and so forth. So kind of a full spectrum all the way from infrastructure to kind of platform as a service kind of offerings available within the Oracle cloud today for developers. Specifically to, specific to containerization and, and developers adopting containers, what we see a lot is obviously a lot of folks leveraging Docker, particularly developers starting with Docker on their laptop, um, maybe even moving to something like a Docker Swarm um, as they kind of move off of the laptop and trying to deploy their containers or oper start to operationalize those containers. In many cases, as Bob mentioned, we've seen a lot of interest in Kubernetes as folks look to kind of operationalize their container-based applications on more of a, a large-scale basis. And we believe at Oracle there's an opportunity for folks even beyond that to not just tie, not just in the container realm, but to tie together the whole container lifecycle, if you like, all the way from building the containers, um, you know, testing the containers, deploying those containers, operating those containers. We believe there's an opportunity to kind of build a full container lifecycle management uh, for developers here, and that's, that's one of the things we're, we're very much focused on. So, I'll let, actually, maybe I'll, let, I'll hand it back. I'll throw the ball. I'll throw the ball back to Bob, the virtual ball, and Bob can talk a little bit about what we announced at, at CoreOS first. Thanks, John. Um, yeah, CoreOS Fest was probably about maybe uh, a couple months ago, uh, right after DockerCon. Uh, it was interesting, uh, going to Coral West Fest reminded me a lot of the very first DockerCon. Uh, we went to DockerCon back in 2014, there's 500 people, almost a ballroom this size, it's kind of very small and intimate. Um, Coral West Fest was kind of the same way, a lot of uh, energy, a lot of creativity coming in, people trying to uh, figure out how to take this sort of next wave, as, as John mentioned, of, of operationalization and, and more of a DevOps or even SRE focus, uh, how you take uh, containers into this next world. But uh, definitely a lot of energy around Kubernetes um, and um, full container lifecycle management. Uh, we announced uh, bringing container Linux, so the core OS, minimal OS, into um, the Oracle Cloud. So that was actually one of the big announcements. 
announcements. And then we, uh, we've dedicated a whole set of engineering resources uh, to support the open source community around Kubernetes also. Uh, it's something we're using internally uh, for our um, cloud services. Uh, so we have a lot of experience in using it. And it's something that uh, we're starting to roll out new services on top of Kubernetes too. So um, it's an open source set of projects that we're, we're supporting and uh, uh, bringing out to the marketplace. So uh, um, there's a series of other announcements we made recently. Um, and uh, actually, uh, I'm going to let John go back on this one. So I get to do CoreOS fast, but he gets to do the uh, open source stuff. Yeah, so I'm uh, pretty excited about this. So in addition to some of the open source stuff around Kubernetes that Bob mentioned that we're working on, uh, we announced three new open source container utilities last week uh, from Oracle. Uh, these are called Smith, Crashcart, and Railcar. And you can read more about these uh, on, in our, on our developer blog here. But to give a kind of brief overview of those, so Smith, the first one here, is really a tool to help folks build what we call micro containers. So really kind of trimming the container or the, the image into just the stuff you need, just your basically your executable and its, by, and its uh, dependencies. Um, you can build one of these micro containers from a yum repo or from your RPMs, or you can basically create a micro container out of a, an existing Docker image if you want to. So you can kind of hook this thing up to Docker Hub, pull down your image, kind of what we call microize it and spit out a, you know, just, just, just enough kind of image to run your stuff. Um, and again, a big part of this is like operational, right? Like I don't want to, I don't want my image to be bloated. I don't, I want to reduce the surface area of that image so that from a security perspective, I also want to make sure, you know, I don't have a bunch of stuff in there that I need to potentially patch or worry about from a vulnerability perspective. I only want the stuff I need in there. So, you know, if there is a vulnerability, hopefully, um, it doesn't apply necessarily to the stuff I have in my micro container, um, that kind of stuff. So, you know, kind of the, the promise of containers, right, is like, you know, just, just put the stuff that you need in the container and nothing more. And then the next kind of open source utility kind of follows on from that. So if I've just put my stuff, you know, in my container that I need to run my app, like what about all my debugging utilities? Like how do I actually debug this thing in production? Um, if it's still running, right? So we introduced this thing called Crash Carp, and basically this is like a, it uses the kind of the sidecar model, um, container model, so it deploys kind of side by side with your micro container, and it's basically a utility that lets you side load an image with, your, with, the, with the Linux binaries you want into an existing container for debugging. So if you wanna, you know, my, my micro container doesn't have bash in it, but I want to be able to run bash against that running container. I can use crash car to, to do that kind of thing, right? So again, more operational, like how do I operationalize this stuff, deploy very tiny, secure containers? How do I troubleshoot those in production? Um, and the third one, Railcar, was actually really, uh, it's actually an implementation of the OCI runtime spec in a language called uh, Rust, which personally I'm not that familiar with. I was more of a C guy, but from what I understand, Rust is kind of, has a lot of the kind of the C stuff, but it's like memory safe and all that kind of stuff and does a lot of cool stuff for you. Um, so this is really more of an implementation just to get discussion going in the community of that OCI runtime spec and, and to get feedback and, and bring folks from the Rust community into the whole container community and that kind of thing. By no means is this a replacement for Docker or anything of like that. It's more of a, just something to get the discussion started in, in the community. So really three very cool things we open source literally just last week. So you can see that Oracle's, you know, very committed to the container community. We're investing heavily in open source, both Kubernetes and other stuff. Um, you know, and uh, hopefully that, you know, go to our blog, check out these utilities. I think these are they're being discussed a lot um, on a lot of the different forums, Hacker News and, and um, Reddit and that kind of stuff. So, you know, chime in. If you want to make a contribution, please do. We're distributing these under the Apache 2 license, so feel free to go at it and contribute as well. And we have to have one slide on the, uh, hey, you, we, you can get a bunch of free credits on Oracle Cloud, go try it out. Um, and with, with that, I think we'll open it up for questions. What kind of questions do you guys have?
Yeah, so Oracle Cloud, as, as Bob mentioned, was kind of built from the ground up by um, a lot of folks, many of whom have come from AWS, from Azure, other places. And we started off with really a, a bare metal cloud offering, so you could spin up a bare metal server and so forth. But obviously, we've layered a lot of services on top of that, so VM-based services, compute-based services, block storage, object storage, um, databases as a service now available. So it's becoming a very f fully featured or fully fledged, if you like, next generation cloud for running high performance workloads. Um, again, you can kind of check it out here. So um, many of those services um, that you would expect are kind of present in the Oracle cloud, but again, really running on next generation, very high performance um, uh, infrastructure. Um, which is kind of passed through to you as a developer. Yes, we have a concept of, we call it a um, VCN, virtual, uh, virtual network, but uh, a similar kind of concept where you can carve out um, your own virtual network, essentially stand up both bare metal hosts and VMs, put them on that network, control access lists and policies for who, who can come into there, do VPN from our cloud to your premises, um, those kind of things. So yes. What are the questions we have? What about on the database side? Well, a lot of folks, at least to start off, and, and again, more of a dev test, they're typically mounting a local Docker volume in the host. And you know, I think some of the images we have up online in GitHub kind of show you how to do some of those cases. Um, you know, as you get more advanced, typically you start talking about a shared storage, some kind of shared storage implementation in your containers. Um, certain, there are certain limitations today, so Oracle Rack is not, Oracle Rack or clusters are not supported on the Docker images today. Um, so it's, it's standalone kind of uh, Oracle databases in the, in, in, in the image. Um, but other than that, it is fully, they are fully supported on running on Docker today. Um, and um, as we said, you can kind of get it from, from the store. So like in, in, in our example, we, um, uh, we're doing some stuff. So we have like a MySQL DB um, behind the scenes. So in like our dev and test use cases, we bring up a MySQL container, you know, mount, mounted to a volume uh, in dev and test, uh, do all the migrations and all of that stuff. Uh, but then when we push to production, we'll probably have like a, um, some kind of uh, hosted like MySQL or uh, like a managed service behind the scenes. So if you're like if you're on Amazon, uh, a lot of folks will like use RDS or something be, something like that for production. Uh, but then you know DevOps doesn't want to give keys, uh, username, passwords, and stuff to developers who are running in Dev and test. So they'll be like, hey, use a container for this instead. Question? Question over here. Yeah, we'd probably need to get some of those so some of those guys uh, uh, over here. But the network, the network is a big, a big aspect of it. Um, so building building that network kind of from the ground up, embedding that network in a lot of the underlying hardware. So done at you know kind of hardware speed, having isolation of the network layer, true isolation from um, you know different network segments and that kind of stuff. So. 
it kind of starts and ends with the network implementation. Like every, I can't remember exactly how it is, but every server that you spin up is less than a, one or two hops from every other server. So from a latency perspective, it's very, very low latency. Um, that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, so the, the virtualization kind of layers in, also in the, in the net, embedded in the network layer. So not just, not just essentially done at the compute layer, it's embedded right in the, into the fabric. Absolutely, yes. So, yeah, sorry, so the question was, does all that good stuff on the network that we just talked about apply to the bare metal servers as well? Absolutely, so the bare metal servers and the virtual machines are all sharing the same underlying substrate, so that that same goodness at the network level is access, accessible to both those, what we call shapes um, in, in Oracle Cloud. Question? So a question was, in, in the containers that you spin up, can you mount, um, as well as having a local volume, can you mount like a, an NFS share uh, or, 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 yeah, or something else? So absolutely, yeah, you can, I think we have an example out somewhere, or a blog on doing that. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely mount an NFS share into those containers. Um, so your containers can share the same storage. Question? Yeah, I think Smith, so I think Smith's actually written in Go, and it has like a, a YAML kind of configuration file, so you actually put in, I think you put in basically what you wanna, which basically library or which thing executable you wanna put inside your container, and it kinda, so it's kinda data driven through the, through the YAML file. Carthur was asking me if I wanted to talk about where it came from. I think, actually, it's a good point. So a lot of, a lot of our, you know, again, a lot of our internal folks leverage containers and both from a development perspective and operationally. And I think a lot of the, this tooling that, that we just open sourced and announced um, really came from folks doing this stuff day to day, right? Like, this is something I want to be able to do. Like, um, I, want, I want to have one of these tiny things, I don't want to be able to troubleshoot it in production, but the tiny thing doesn't have all my troubleshooting tools in it. So it really came from, I guess, our own internal experiences of developing container-based products and operating them, and these are the kind of, you know, these are kind of some, some of the things we've found, right, um, operationally. Hmm. I think from what I've heard also is that as developers um, use containers and trade off images and it kind of goes through the pipeline, layers and layers form and, the, and it kind of gets almost bloated. The point that by the time it gets through to an end point, um, you sometimes want to strip out all those layers and get down to just what you need. During the development phase, the staging phase, the QA and the test phase, those layers are important, they're useful in having all that history. Um, and we've seen a lot of um, tracking those within uh, even Container Cloud. Um, some of the large, the number of uh, layers that are built in some of these images uh, gets very, very large and convoluted. Uh, when they go to production, you want to strip a lot of those layers out, uh, collapse them down. Um, but when you do so, you end up losing some of the troubleshooting and some of that debugging, and that's where Crash Car comes in to help you out. Uh, so it's kind of that uh, once we took all this cool container stuff and tried to move it out to production, we had these bloated images. Uh, we had to clean those up debug those and find ways to orchestrate and manage those. And that's kind of where we are uh, and what we're sharing right now, so.
for which, which piece? The yeah, so we have uh, CLI and SDKs um, posted um, for use with Oracle Cloud. The question is, do we support Docker Machine? I don't think we believe we support Docker Machine today. Docker Machine, um, I think that's something we'd like to look at at some point. Question? I think I think there is. I'm I'm probably not the best person, but I think I think we still do co contribute to that from on the on the Linux side in particular. Um, obviously, the, one of the big ones we're kind of focused on is Kubernetes, right? So that's what Bob was talking about. That's that's a big project, obviously, for those of you who kind of track it. And there's a lot of like special interest interest groups. There's like you know security security, obviously, federations, a whole bunch of groups um, that are interesting there. Um, and I think that's probably, I mean, there's obviously others inside of Oracle as a whole, but I think the one, probably the ones we're qualified to talk about is definitely the Kubernetes is the big one um, that we see right now. Yeah. Question. Yeah, we have, um, at least on the container side, we have a bunch of great content on our blogs um, so like, and, and videos. Um, I think there's, there might be some on YouTube and stuff, stuff like that, but definitely a lot of blogs are like how to uh, create an NFS share, how to mount containers into that. Um, so we did a lot of kind of how-to content. In fact, there's a blog on how do I hook up to the Docker store, pull down images from the Oracle images from the Docker store, kind of walks you through that. So there's a lot of good kind of how-to content um, on our blog. And again, we there's a developer blog that covers these three open source tools and kind of walks you through them. And these are also obviously hosted on our GitHub account, so it has, they will have readmes on how to use them and that kind of stuff. Yes, absolutely. Um, so there's an SDK for our cloud. I think there's a Python SDK, a Java SDK. And I'm probably missing one, one. But we have a bunch of SDKs where you can do stuff like that. We also have a Terraform provider for our, um, for our bare metal cloud. So you can use your Terraform templates to spin up resources in the cloud as well. What other questions can we answer before we hit the pizza? Go ahead. Yeah, I think kind of approaching it from two angles, right? So obviously we want a, a rock solid cloud platform, you know, very high performance, reliability, security, performance um, for, for enterprises, obviously. But at the same time, a lot of the stuff that, that Bob and I are working on are really making sure we have the tooling for developers to be able to embrace that. So the containers are part of that. Obviously there's you know, other things that are part of that as well. So how do we 
how do we onboard developers effectively to a cloud and make it something that you want to use as a developer? So it's great that we have this super performant substrate, high performance cloud, right? Next generation built from the ground up. But at the same time, we want to make it easy developers to consume that. So SDK is obviously part of that. Um, containers are part of that. All the tooling that we were talking about is part of that. And making that experience for you, because the reality is, is as you probably know, on some of the on some of these cloud services, there's hundreds of things, right? It's like I have to stitch together, I have to figure out how that thing connects to that thing. And like I'm just trying to build a simple app, right? I'm trying to get it written and deployed as quickly as I can. Like help me do that. And so we think we think there's an opportunity there to really focus, not necessarily do everything, right? But really focus and help developers do what they want to do: build applications, build container applications, get them deployed very quickly. Um, and can deploy it on our on our cloud. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of where we're focused, kind of at a macro level, without going into too much detail there. Question. That's a that's a really good question. That's probably a whole other talk, um, but um, yeah, I mean we we have um, a lot of the folks who are working on Java in our organization, and those are the kind of things we're thinking about. So how do we make it super simple, right, to to do those kind of things? So I guess you know we can. Uh, that's probably another follow up talk. That's a whole talk in and of itself. Believe me. Good questions. I want some pizza. All right. Thank you. I will add one quick thing. Um, since we do have a lot of like projects on GitHub and stuff, and Oracle, you know, is a really, really large company, right? So uh, if you're using some like one of the products, um, like whether it's Oracle database running as a container or whatever. Uh, and things aren't working right, the best way to kind of contact the people behind the scenes is probably to uh, log an issue in GitHub. It kind of like short circuits a bunch of stuff and gets the right eyes kind of looking at uh, looking at the problem. So uh, play around with all that all the stuff that you know uh, John and Bob talked about. Um, and um, you know if you have issues, just uh, file file a GitHub issue against it, and you know some somebody who has the right expertise will be looking at it. Um, once again, we have a ton of pizza, so feel free to grab some. Um, we can do like a quick like social thing uh, afterwards. Thanks. <laughs>